Yeah, good afternoon. Whoever uh, few numbers are available here in the afternoon. Uh, uh, I would like to thank Chairman in his absentia because he has invited me to this uh, presentation. Today I will be briefly covering what are the steps we have taken to <coughs> increase the utilization level of CND waste and also some of the way forward how to increase it further. These are the uh, basic two issues I want to cover in my presentation. Next, we all know the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development adopted by the UN General Assembly. You all must be aware, but still, just as a starting point, it has got 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Normally, usually we call us SDGs. And out of that 17, next, the goal 12, Sustainable Consumption and Production, is of extreme importance to the construction industry. And this goal, goal 12, has got many targets, say 12 targets, and out of 12 targets, three targets are again important, very important in the construction industry. Can you just go on? Next. So just I will mention these targets, these specific targets. Achieve efficient use of natural resources. Next. Substantially reduce waste generation. And third one, achieve environmentally, sorry, previous one, let me complete. <laughs> Okay. No, no, that is not there. That is a problem. It's matching. Okay. So these three targets are extremely important for the construction industry. So construction industry is concerned. This is one of the most consuming, most guzzling, that means the resource guzzling industry compared to any other industry. It consumes enormous resources compared to any other industry in the planet Earth. So with it, with that, with that end. We are, got, uh, we, 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 we are led to fast depletion of natural resources like uh, aggregates. And also the other side, enormous waste generation during all the phases of building construction. Next. So this is the phase, this is a problem we have to grapple. On one side, there is an over-exploitation over of natural resources. And the other side, mounting waste generation. These are the issues we have to grapple. Next. So whatever waste is generated, whatever waste is generated, we indiscriminately dump it to unauthorized places, polluting all our systems, be it air, be it water, be it soil, without realizing that C and D waste is one of the invaluable source of new construction material, new building materials. And it can be, this is a material which can be processed whereby we can extract new materials which can be utilized in the new construction without in place of using the new resource, new source, newly sourced material from the Mother Earth. Next. You all know this relevant, circular economy is very much relevant or the concept of cradle to cradle is very much important rather than going for cradle to grave. The present system is cradle to grave. We have to change it to cradle to cradle or we should go for a circle economy if we want to fully utilize, we, we want to make a sustainable construction practice in our country. Next. So recycling technology, concrete was considered to be a very difficult material to recycle till recently. But technology has developed, equipment has developed, uh, uh, plants are available. Now we have got a wide range of technologies for concrete or even any construction material to recycle it. And this range from simple crushing to re completely recyclable concrete. It is possible now. You can see some of the next one. These are the photographs of the next, next, next also. This is a photograph of the aggregates extracted from the CND waste. You can see how clean it is or more, rather more cleaner than the natural aggregates. That's what you can see from here. So technology is available to extract very, very clean materials from the used materials or demolished materials from our waste stream. Next. So just a, a small comparison with other countries, countries like uh, uh, Japan, I think some of them already mentioned, then uh, Germany and Norway. We have got a research collaboration with the Norway also. 
they use 90% of their CND waste in their new construction. Why? Because they start using this as a resource, not as a waste. And in our country, exactly reverse. We use less than 10%, dump 90%. This is the scenario in our country. And it is this trend, it is this status quo which has to be reversed. And that is what we have to try for. All who are is connected with the construction industry or generation of the waste, make sure, be part of the scheme to fully utilize this waste stream in our own construction. Next. Uh, I would like to mention some of the promotional measures we have adopted or we have implemented to increase the utilization of CND waste in our country. Next. I will mention some of the action plan. This action plan was developed somewhere, I would say, about 10 or 12 years back when we are in ground zero. Nothing was there. Only Burari plant was there. We started from scratch. No guidelines, no codes, uh, no plants, no equipments. At that time, we had de decided to make an action plan by the then Ministry of Urban Development. I will mention the action plan, some of the few, uh, major action plans, along with the present status to know where do we stand. Next. Next. So the one of the major action plan was, at that time there was no guidelines available how to handle this material. We are practically blank. There was no guidelines how to handle this material, what else can be done. So we asked the concerned agencies to make guidelines first. First you make guidelines. At least as a starting point. And with our request, many organizations came forward. Next. Like Indian Concrete Institute, they are the first to make the guidelines. Then uh, uh, BMTPC is another part of MOUD. Then uh, CPCB and another agency are also making guidelines. Now these guidelines are available. It is available in the public, dom public domain. So you can go through it. That document is available. Next one. Now, at that time there was no course. How to utilize this material? Absolutely there is no course. And no engineer will use a material unless it is covered by code of practice or code of specifications. So we asked BIS, next one, and the Indian Road Congress, you formulate codes. We have made a request to them. We have formulated codes. And the BIS, BIS and IRC responded immediately. Within maybe two, three years, they have came up with the codes. BIS told there is no need for a new code. We will only revise our existing codes. Existing code is 383, IS 383. They have revised that course, incorporating the use of CND recycled material for the new construction. Similarly, IRC also came with our request, they are responders. They also came with a code, it is called IRC 121. Previously, there was no code used in this material. And with that one, this material can be used in the highway sector. Then, next one. At that time, there is no regulatory framework. There is no rules available. So we asked the Ministry of Environment and Forest, make rules. Without rules, we cannot move forward. And Ministry of Environment also responded very fast. Within two, three years, they came with the rules. It is called, uh, I cannot read it now. Uh, next one. They, uh, they came with the rule, uh, Construction and Demolition Waste Management Rule 2016. They also came with the rules. We all acted fast. And the next one. And review of uh, municipal bylaws is a very crucial aspect. It is a basic structure at the ground level uh, rules. Through basic the, uh, municipal bylaws only, we can implement these rules. And this has to be made by the concerned state government. Every state government was asked, you make the rules, you incorporate the rules and guidelines in the bylaws, municipal bylaws. And uh, next one. Few state has done, unfortunately, all the state has not done so far. A large number of state has yet to make, modify their bylaws, incorporating the uh, rules as well as the guidelines. Next one. And an advisory was issued to all the state governments. You establish a recycling plant at every one, one million plus cities. Every cities that produce one million plus, uh, uh, sorry, the population of one million plus should have a, a plant. They should install a plant. And you can see what is the uh, next one. So when we started this uh, action plan, there was only one plant. Now, at least it has come to the level of 15 plants. That is, a, this uh, is the data of last year. Hosak Thayit must have increased to a few more. So we have got 15 plants available now with the advisory going to each state. 
The next one. Organize training, training programs, seminars, and exhibitions. A lot number of, almost all the major cities of India, we organize the exhibitions, uh, seminars, and workshops. It has gone to a, uh, to a large extent to sensitize the people on this issue. Next one. This is uh, a lot of, next one. Introduce certificate course or diploma courses in various institutes. We ask many institutions, including the Council of Architecture, you devise a course, do this one, at least in the graduate course or a diploma course, you do that one. Unfortunately, next one, no institution has come forward, start a course, because we want ground level people to handle this management and uh, uh, waste management process. Unfortunately, nobody has come forward so far, to my knowledge, to start a course on this one. Next one. So before going to the cordial details, let me just give a very important statistics. You will get an idea where do we stand regarding the recycling or regarding the processing of the waste generated by it. And this data I had taken from the guidelines of BNDPC, which is a part of the Ministry of Urban Development. Next one. Please go through. It's a very interesting statistics. This is the number of plants in other countries compared to the number of plants available in our country. You can see a country like Germany. Germany is the size of a, say, UP, an average Indian state. That's all. They have got 220 recycling plants. And when this uh, BMTPC guidelines were available, we were having only three plants, just three plants. Of course, now we have got 15. That's what I know, the latest number. 15 plants. You can see where do we stand and how far we have to go how long we are to go to complete, to fully utilize the waste generated by our industry. Next one. I will, uh, just a few slides I will spend on our formulation or the revision of codes, just to get an idea where do we stand, where our standard stands. Next one. So IS-383 is a basic code for uh, construction material like aggregate, sand, and all these things. And this was revised in 2016 based on the advisory from the Ministry of Urban Development. And prior to this revision, only stone aggregate from the natural sources permitted, was permitted. No process aggregate was permitted as per this course. So there was no way for an engineer or any construction manager to utilize this material without the caudal provisions. So with the provision, with this revision, next, next one, with this revision in 2016, they have permitted CND waste also along with other manufactured aggregates. You can score next. So they allow many manufactured aggregates now, like uh, steel slag, copper slag, bottom slag, bottom ash. So aggregates from CND waste is also included as a manufactured aggregate and is permitted in our new construction. It was a big breakthrough. It was a big step so that now we can confidently use this material in our construction. Next one. So this code uh, categorized two types of uh, aggregates. The code gives two classif classification of aggregates into two. One is recycled aggregate. Recycled aggregate is a conglomeration of aggregates from different materials. It can be stone, it can be tiles, it can be concrete, it can be brick. It's a conglomeration of aggregates. Next one. You can see it's a, it's a combination of aggregates. And code permits only the coarse aggregate of this category to be used. And it is used in low-end low applications, not in high-end application. Next category is recycled concrete aggregate. Next one. Next one. And this recycled concrete aggregate is made from concrete lumps. Say more than 90% concrete lumps, it can be considered as a concrete uh, aggregate. And this... Uh, this, uh, this is available at both coarse aggregate as well as fine aggregate. This can be utilized. Code permits us to use both coarse aggregate and fine aggregate in the constructions. And next one. So, uh, next one. Code gives to what extent, what percentage of this recycled material can be utilized in new construction. Next one. Just continue. Continue. Next one. 
See, court gives these values. To what extent we can use this recycled aggregate in our new construction? This court is being again revised. Probably this limit is further getting revised. Probably an upper revision will be taking place. Uh, instead of 20 percent, it may be 25 or 30 percent now. Next one. And this uh, this was one of the major projects we could use as a major use major use in this building. This is a new Supreme Court complex in Pragati Maidan where we extensively used these aggregates, recycled aggregates, recycled material in the new construction system in the form of a recycled aggregate concrete. Next. All the walling system are made with the recycled aggregate concrete. Next one. Now IRC course. BAS has revised this code. They have not gone for a new code, but IRC has brought up a new code, exclusively new code, only on aggregates and uh, using of CND waste materials. This code is IRC 121. It has come in 2017 based on our request in 2012 or 13. I am not exactly remembering. Now, with this code, next one. Now, CND waste agri can be used in all categories of roads, including national highways. They permitted the use of this material in all categories of roads, including national highways. It is a big step forward. It is a big step forward for anybody for consuming the material you, you devise. Next one. And it permits practically for all components of the roads. It can be used in embankment. It can be used in base course, sub base course. It can be used in concrete pavements. It can be used in um, uh, uh, lighter items like curbstone and uh, power block. So many application areas are available for to use it. Next one. And 100% of RCA can be used in uh, footpaths where the loading is less. There is no truck movement. There is no heavy vehicle movement like cycle tracks, parking areas, rural roads. This all can be used 100% uh, CND waste recycled material can be used. Next one. So with that one, let me also come to the, what are our way forward, how, how much we can move forward so that the entire waste generated by the construction industry is utilized in the construction industry itself. You need not go somewhere else. We don't go to the river bank. You need not go into the roads. Everywhere we can certainly use for that one. So implement C and D rules, the first point. I think Minister of Urban Development person has not come. They have made the rules. Now the implementation has been done. It is almost 16, 2016, it is almost seven years, eight years. It is partially implemented. And to implement this one, certainly the state government has to come into picture. Next one. Another gray area of CND waste is there is no reliable estimate of the quantum of the CND material in our country. There is no reliable estimate. Everybody, somebody, starting from 10 million to 200 million, we have got a figure. You can imagine what is the accuracy of this figure. And probably all the municipal corporations have to take initiative to bring, at least to have a reasonable estimate of what is being generated in our country. Next one. This is another major issue. Demolition in our country is a haphazard activity. We simply bulldoze it. We simply break with a ball, metallic ball. What is the result? All this material get uh, intermixed. And it's very difficult to segregate. Now we have to think about a proper deconstruction practices. Deconstruction means take out item by item from a building. You need not um, uh, completely, completely demolish the building. I mean, then take out the material. Rather that one, take out the material one by one. Brick can be separate, window can be separate, then um, concrete can be separate. That will drastically increase your recovery rate. The recovery rate of your material will be drastically improved if you go for a deconstruction practices rather than half hazard demolition. Next one. Now, this is another major issue. I already mentioned, we only got 15 units, the whole country, 15 processing units. So we should increase the number of processing plants. Ministry told that, okay, 1 million plus cities, you should have a processing plant. No, we should go further. Any city which produce more than 100 ton per day should have a processing plant, if you want to fully utilize these materials. And uh, nowadays, small plants are available. Mobile plants are available. Anybody can, can take it on a hire. It is not a big issue to put a plan nowadays. Anybody can even hire. Once in a week, you can hire and use it. 
That is a facility available this one. And this has to be done. Again, initiative has to come from municipal corporations and uh, government, state government. Next. Then another issue is intermixing with the solid waste and uh, municipal waste. This is another major issue. So there should be a separate dumping yard for dumping the CND waste alone. In Delhi, most of the place it is being done. We have got a separate dumping yard for CND waste so that it is segregated from the municipal waste. But other cities, of course, I don't know. To my knowledge, most of the other cities doesn't have a system of separate uh, dumping for the CND waste. Next. GST, I think the previous speaker has already mentioned, is an anomaly is there. And for the past, uh, uh, I think, one or two years, all the commercial and the trade organizations are trying for it, but unfortunately, it is not being done. It's a typical example. A recycled material, concrete or a brick, it, 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 they charge 18%, whereas a normal brick or a fly ash brick, it's only 5%. Just can, you can see the anomaly. Probably the government and the trade bodies has to intervene and make sure that this anomaly is rectified. Next one. Technical institutes should come forward. This is again a, a long pending issue. We do high-end research in IIT, how to process it, what is the optimum research, CRI also a lot of research, do how to process it. But remember, we also want people at the ground level who can handle it, who can manage it, who can process it. And that skilled and trained people are missing. And that can be given by technical institutes, either by a certificate course program or by a, a diploma course program, so that we have got a large large number of trained and skilled people to handle waste material. These are some of my uh, suggestions for moving forwards. Of course, the idea is to have a complete utilization of this waste stream. Now we have got all the facilities, regulatory mechanism is in place, we have got equipments, we have got plants, we have got uh, codes, we have got guidelines. It is up to us. Every engineer, everybody who is handling the construction and the waste must put his effort to make sure the maximum utilization of the anti waste in our new construction rather than dumping it on the roadsides or in the riverbeds or in other unauthorized places. With that one, let me conclude next. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>